We hear again the story of the transfiguration as it is recorded in Matthew's Gospel. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and they were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I can still see the woman standing there with the camera in her hand. It actually happened many years ago during a wedding that took place right here in this sanctuary. The woman was dressed in a black, skin-tight dress with no sleeves or straps and a rather high hemline. To tell you the truth, it looked like a tube sock with the toe cut out. (laughs) And it looked like something more appropriate for the beach rather than a sanctuary. Now, I noticed the woman standing there as the bride was coming down the aisle. I noticed her because she was towering a good three feet above the tallest person in the sanctuary. She was towering over everyone because she was standing up on the pew so she could see over everyone and get a picture of the bride coming down the aisle. When she saw me looking at her, she mouthed, Is this okay? (laughs) I shook my head and mouthed, absolutely not. (laughs) But I then motioned that if she wanted to come to the front of the sanctuary, she could take a picture of the bride as she was coming down the aisle. Now, when you see things like that, it makes you wonder, is nothing sacred anymore? Probably not. Consider, if you will, the expression that you hear all the time these days. You hear it at school and in the supermarket and on the subway as you make your way to work. You hear it from teenagers and toddlers. And you even hear it from people in the twilight of their years. It's a very simple expression that consists of just three words. And those words are O. My God. Now, whenever people say that, I wonder, are they praying to God? Are they even thinking about God? Many years ago, a Methodist minister by the name of Spencer Marsh wrote a book called God, Man, and Archie Bunker. In the book, Archie is having a theological conversation with God They're talking about the Ten Commandments, and when they get to the commandment about not taking the Lord's name in vain, Archie begins to get uncomfortable. Okay, he says, I'll admit it, I'm guilty. But if you had to work with the clowns that I work with, and if you had a meathead for a son-in-law, you'd be guilty too. All of this makes you wonder how seriously people take God these days. Maybe what we need is a little sacred shock and awe. That's what happened to Peter and the other disciples while they were up there on that mountain. It all started when Jesus was transfigured 
before them. We're told that his face began to shine like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. That, however, was only the beginning of this sacred shock and awe moment. After that, Moses and Elijah suddenly materialized out of thin air, and then they heard that voice from the heavens thunder. Do you remember what the voice said? This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now that was the tipping point for Peter, James, and John. When they heard that voice thunder from the heavens, they fell down to the ground in fear and trembling. You see, on that mountain, what happened was Peter, James, and John came face to face with the mysterium tremendum, the tremendous mystery. They came face to face with the God who is high and holy, the God who is mighty and mysterious. This is the God who called to Moses from the burning bush and told him not to come any closer because the ground on which he was standing was holy ground. This is the God who led the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand and whose mighty love rolled the stone away on that Easter morning so that the beloved son could be raised to everlasting glory. It's the same God whose glory filled the temple when Isaiah was there and left him in fear and trembling. The shock and awe moment was so overwhelming that Isaiah actually cried out, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. Now these days you don't hear a lot about this shock and awe God. What you hear about today is the God who is gentle and gracious, the God who is kind and compassionate and is always there watching over you. It's the God that is celebrated in a poem about a robin and a sparrow. The poem goes like this. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, my friend, I think it must be that they have no heavenly father such as watches over you and me. Now we need to be clear here. God is gentle and gracious. God is kind and compassionate, and God is always there watching over you. But God is also high and holy. God is also mighty and mysterious. That's the God that Peter, James, and John encountered on that mountain. And there's a very good reason why you and I and everyone else out there needs to have room in their faith for this shock and awe God. You see, if your faith doesn't have room for that shock and awe God, you might stop listening to God. And what was it that the voice thundered that day from the heavens? This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. If your faith doesn't include that shock and awe God, you could end up like the teenager who went to his father one day and asked if he could use the family car. The father thought about it. Well, he said, I'll make a deal with you. If you bring your grades up and read your Bible more and get a haircut, we'll talk about it. Well, the teenager went away disappointed, but a month later he was back and he asked if he could use the family car again. Well, the father said, I'm really proud of you. You did bring your grades up And you did read your Bible more, but you didn't get that haircut. The teenager nodded his head. You know, Dad, he said, I've been thinking about that. Moses had long hair, and Samson had long hair, and so did Jesus. The father smiled. That's true, the father said. And they also walked everywhere they went. (laughs) Now compare that to the man who surprised the members of a small rural congregation somewhere out 
in the middle of Indiana. The first time he showed up on a Sunday morning, he stu stood out like a sore thumb. He had a ponytail and lots of tattoos. And because he was a biker, he wore a lot of leather. Despite those differences, however, everyone in the congregation embraced him, and he kept coming back. He eventually confessed his faith in Christ and became a member of the congregation. But there was one lingering question. People wondered why the biker always wore long-sleeved shirts. He wore those long-sleeved shirts even in the middle of the summer when the weather was unbearably hot and humid. One day, the biker went to the minister and told him that the reason why he wore those long-sleeved shirts was because he had a tattoo on his forearm of a naked woman, and he didn't want all the other parishioners to see it. A couple of weeks later, the biker went back to the minister and asked him if he wanted to see the tattoo. The minister immediately became a little uncomfortable, but that didn't stop the biker he proudly rolled up his sleeve, and as he did so, he said, you know that tattoo of the naked woman? Well, I had the tattoo artist put clothes on her. <laughs> That's what happens when you believe in the God who is high and holy, when you believe in the God who is mighty and mysterious. That's what happens when you believe in the God who appeared on that mountain to Peter, James, and John. If we had a little more shock and awe, God, maybe we'd all listen more to the beloved Son. Who knows, people here, there, and everywhere might even begin to start taking God seriously again. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen.